Hey everyone, welcome to Mix in America. This is episode 12, I believe. I have some guests with me today. Uh, Jake Winicky, who uh, played one uh, preseason with the Vikings, plays in Canada right now, wide receiver for the Montreal Alouettes. Uh, grew up here in Maple Grove, went to Maple Grove High School. Uh, he is joining me today. He brought with him his wife, Brenda, and his new little baby boy, Israel, is also here with us, so you might hear him jumping in if he's got something to say as well. But um, I just wanted to, to have him on, have them both on. Um, she is black, he is white. They have a little mixed baby, um, just like me. Hopefully he grows up to be as awesome as me. Uh, no, I, I always say that we are the cutest mixed babies. So I'm looking at another cute mixed baby right now. So uh, I just want to thank you guys for being on, for, uh, for joining me today. And just, I guess, introduce yourself, talk about a little bit about growing up here in in Maple Grove, dating, you guys met at Maple Grove High School. Um, what was that like? Just say hi and give us your experience a little bit. So, like he said, my name is Brenda, and yeah, I would love to talk about, I guess, my experience at Maple Grove. I mean, I grew up in, obviously, a black home, coming from Africa, like race was not a thing that we, we care or talked about because we all look the same and even when people came from out of the country if they were white or whatever they came from we treated them with respect and that was something that we just grew up like knowing then when i came here race became like a bigger deal than i expected it to be then now i went from like not caring about how people look to i guess being watchful on like how you talk to people all the friends that you have. And I think I really experienced that when I went to Maple Grove because a lot of the kids that go to Maple Grove are white. And I mean, for an athlete, for a boy that's black, they're considered cool, kind of that. Oh yeah, he plays sport, we get to hang out with him and we can date him. But for a black girl, you're considered basically loud or ghetto if you act a certain way. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to associate with you because I guess you're not considered cool unless you're unless you play sports. Or even if a black a white guy likes a black girl, he more shy when it comes to talking about his feeling. He might not show it because in high school, I feel like people just look at girls, especially black girls, differently. And I think that's one reason I was kind of shy to talk to Jay because I was afraid of people thinking of me a certain way, like I was loud or ghetto or all the names that comes with, I guess, being a black girl in high school. So, yeah. All right, Jake. So what's your perspective of that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, even just touching on like our relationship in high school. So we were pretty good friends in high school. We actually didn't start dating um, until college. Um, we kind of, I guess we kind of went on some dates um, in high school, went to church together, went out to eat together and had like the same friend group. Um, so we did a lot, but I even remember times, um, like she said, where it's just like, it was hard for us to even be ourselves around each other. And it kind of just like, even, even if people weren't, it just felt like they were at least, and maybe it's partially true. They're looking at us differently. Like I remember times like she was our basketball manager for our um, basketball team. And a lot of times before, like she'd come over to my house and and we just hang out um, before we go to uh, the game or whatever. And like, I would give her a ride home. I remember walking like th through the parking lot to uh, the car together and just thinking, just like, man, like people are looking at us. Why are they looking at us like this? Just because it's um, like a mixed couple. And I think even more than that, it's like, okay, it's a white guy with a black girl. And I think if it's a, a lot of times in our culture, it's like if it's a black guy with a white girl, that's fine. Yeah. But I think when you see the opposite, it's kind of like, what are they doing? Yeah. yeah, I told you guys, I mean, that's that's my situation. My mom is black, my dad is white. So you do see, it's more common that a black guy is, is dating a white girl or married a white girl. So it is, personally, I think it's pretty cool when it's yeah. that way, because that's what I saw growing up. Um, but it is less common, and you yeah. probably do get more looks or more. Um, what about, like, you guys had, you said the same friend groups, but like, with friends, family, when you did start dating... Um, was there any conversations? Did you get, whether it's, I guess, maybe strangers too, friends, family, strangers. Have you had um, conversations with people, interactions with people where they were surprised or is it more, it's a lot more common now than it was when my parents did and so they got married in the seventies. But um, what have your interactions been like with people or conversations with friends, family or strangers even? Um, I think for me, 
when I introduced Jake to my family, like, they love him right away. And <laughs> my mom was like, oh. And for my side, I don't think I've ever experienced, maybe Jake can kind of talk about that, like, people looking at him differently because he was white. Um, I know when we started dating from his side, I just felt like they wanted him to be with a white girl. I don't know. I felt like I couldn't be myself. Um, it really took me, like, maybe us getting married before I could actually sit and have conversation with them because I just, like, every time we went, like, in family, like, gathering, I was the only black person. And I felt like no one ever came up to me and kind of talked to me about that. It was almost, it was like, oh, hi. This is your girlfriend or wife, and that was pretty much it. The conversation would just kind of surface, and for me, I love digging deep. I love getting to know people that way. Then I know we just had an experience, like, right before having him. Uh, My cousin and I were not really close, and Jake was coming to say hi to him, and he kind of looked at Jake like, what is she doing with him? Mm -hmm. And I think that was... I think our first time, like, in a family situation where we just both felt so uncomfortable, I felt really bad for him. I just, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, i say that's probably, that's probably the first time where I really felt like, wow, like, almost like I should not be with her. Or, or that's what they thought I should not be with her. Yeah. I mean, there's times where I go to, like, family reunions and gatherings, go to the house on Christmas or Thanksgiving, and all our families there, and they've always treated me with such love. I mean, there's been times where I might get, like, a look, um, especially early on in our relationship, like, can't believe she's not with an African guy or something. It's just like he doesn't understand our culture and different things. And as I started to get to know them and build relationships with them, they and they saw that I, they saw that I cared about it and I wanted to to get to know. And they just kind of got to know me for who I was. And they pretty much from the first moment I ever met them, like they just loved me, um, like I was part of the family and treated me like that. Like her mom to this day, like she calls me her son, especially once we got married. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and she loves me so much. She's always checking on me, praying for me. Uh, loving on me so yeah when, when her cousin did that that was pretty much the first time that i felt like oh man like I can't be, yeah. like what am i doing <laughs> yeah or like do i do i belong it's kind of the first time i i guess i questioned that but um even her rest of her family um just loving me through that um made me know i belong so you talked about african culture yeah. yeah so that's something that the conversations i've had with people about interracial relationships and stuff people talk about like culture and, and different things but a lot of times it's, well, they grew up in the same city. They they have the same culture, right? Yeah. If, but you did come from a different country. So you, and you were 13, you said, when you came yeah. over here. So um, you're pretty American, but I mean, you did have a culture back in your country, back home. Has that been different at all? Maybe first of all, for you, what was that like coming to America? But then you're actually, you married into a different culture. Like when my mom and dad got married, they were both. I mean, my, my dad is from Missouri, but I mean, grew up in, in America. They went to high school in Minnesota. They Their families were from the same kind of area. So there wasn't really a culture thing. It was literally just a skin color thing. But for you, it was an actual culture thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. When I, I still joke about it, sometimes I'm like, I don't think Jake fully understands me because I feel like the way we were brought up are completely different. Um, just the way... Like, the talk in their home, like, it's completely different from me. Like, African culture is all about respect. And, like, someone older, you have to call them aunt or uncle. Or even though you're not related, you call them cousin and all these different things. And just how we, just everything, like, how we deal with certain situations is is different. Like, Jake is more, he's, he don't have a problem when it comes to expressing how he feels. And I was brought up in a way that if something was bothering me, I just kind of kept that in. And I, um, my mom is really straight. So when my mom talked to me or if I did something wrong, um, she just did the talking and I kept quiet. And that I wasn't given the opportunity to express how I feel. So I kind of brought that into my relationship with him. Like when we had problems and disagreement, like he want to talk right away. And for me, I just shut down. Like, I don't want to talk about it at all. <laughs> and, um, and it's just little things like that, honestly. Like, it's just different. I don't even know how to explain it. It's yeah. completely different. Like, But it's cool to see that he can be from somewhere so far away, but we have so much in common. 
but mm-hmm. we still have that culture differences that we kind of, I guess, struggle with sometimes, but yeah. What about, what country specifically are you from? I'm from Liberia. Liberia? So I was born in Liberia, then during the war, my mom and I moved to Ivory Coast, and when she came in 2000, I stayed back. So I went to school in Ghana, grew up there, then came here, so. Oh, cool. Um, is there any, anything culturally or even like food that, because mm-hmm. like, there's always, a, you know, when you marry, you marry the, you're used to your mom's cooking or whatever, now your yeah. wife's cooking for you or something like that. <laughs> is there any food that you, that you just love? Or is there, is there stuff that you're like, you, you grew up eating that and you're like, yeah, I'm a, how how does that food food being a big part of culture, no matter what your yeah. culture is, like food is a part yeah. of that. Is there anything like that or food? Yeah, yeah. food is definitely a big thing. And luckily, we both love food and we love to try new food. And whether it's like even African food or any food, we love to try. So I've I've tried a lot of African foods. I've had pretty much almost everything. She cooks a lot of it, and I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's some stuff that I don't necessarily like or I don't want it every single day, <laughs> and she might want it every single day because that's what she grew up having. And so there's a lot of times when. Especially where it's at the house. We live with my parents right now. And, like, they don't make African food. <laughs> I, I can't even make African and, food there because I feel like they're going to be like, oh, that smells, or what yeah. are you making? I know one um, thing that I always laugh about, like, for Africans, when we cook the fish, we cook the whole thing, and mm. you eat every part of it. And Jake mom is just like, oh, <laughs> that's disgusting. Why would you eat that? So, but Jay has gotten really used to it because when we went to Florida, we saw this white lady eating like a whole fish. So I'm like, you see, it's just like a, like where you grew up. Like, yeah. so. No, that's true. And there's, there's times where we'll be at the house and she's just like, oh, I'm sick of white people food. <laughs> <laughs> like, she just wants something else. She wants, she wants some African food. Yeah, for sure. Um, so let's get, we'll get a little more serious for a second here, but like, mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what your conversations about race culture have been uh, growing up in in the Twin Cities, but the conversation about race in the Twin Cities changed drastically Mm. when George Floyd died. Um, I've had a lot more conversations with race. Even me and my wife have had more conversations about race Mm. since then. Um, Has have your conversations about race changed since then? Have you had conversations with other people maybe since then or maybe even or maybe you guys had a better understanding of what race relations was like in the Twin Cities, but I feel like for a lot of people, they they think of racism as a Southern thing, and they yeah. don't think of it as a as a Minnesota problem. Yeah. You know, we're about as far north as you can get in America. Yeah. Um, but the conversation changed. Mm-hmm. Definitely more conversations since then. Um, what what conversations have you guys had? Has that changed the conversations for you or with anyone else? I would say it definitely changed drastically with, with George Floyd and just everything going on just here in Minnesota. Because, I mean, like she mentioned, when we were in Florida. We went there in uh, January. And I remember when we were driving down through, um, passing through different states, and especially when we got into the south. Like, I remember driving through Mississippi. And it's just like, it was a different world down there. And, um, I mean, it's just it's just way more segregated than we see here. And, um, yeah, we I mean, we felt that we felt the tension when we would go to just different places. Like, sometimes we'd be stop at a gas station in a completely white area. And then you go a couple miles and it's a completely black area. And it just didn't seem real mixed. And they even looked at a mixed couple differently. And I remember we were talking a lot about it. Like, wow, like it's kind of it's a different world down there. And, and and obviously we just knew that the history from down there and um, a little bit of it. And, and just seeing a lot of the racism and, and just even the racial tension down there that still is present. And I think in Minnesota, we just thought, man, like it's just so much better. And then obviously <laughs> with all the George Floyd stuff that happened right here, in our backyard, it kind of opened our eyes to be like, wow, like, um, it's still going on right here. It's, it's going on in, in Minnesota, too. And it, it brought up so many conversations with us, with, with our friends, um, experiences that she's had, experiences that a lot of our friends have had, uh, especially, I think, a lot of uh, black men uh, that they've had of just, just so many uh, times just driving and getting pulled over just because they're black. And, and just countless examples of people just... Um, being treated wrong just because their skin color and it's stuff that we even talked about where it's like we don't really see that in minnesota but now our eyes are being open and and it still happens it happens in minnesota so. yeah for sure um i do want to i should have warned you a little bit this is kind of a heavy question but um you talked about a black man and you are a white father that has mm-hmm. a black son mm-hmm. uh, i actually had a friend reach out to a friend from college reach out to me a few years ago 
because he's he's actually Mexican, but he married a black woman, has a black son. Mm-hmm. And he said, he just asked, he's like, if, do you, if you don't mind me asking, do you feel like your white dad adequately prepared you to be a black man mm-hmm. in America? So that's a bit of a heavy question. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you what I told him, but I want to ask you, like, what do you feel about mm-hmm. raising a black man now mm-hmm. in America in, in all that we're going through and all that mm-hmm. happens in America? Yeah. I mean, that is a it's a pretty deep question. And I mean, the first thing that comes to my head is just like above anything above his skin color, obviously I realize he's going to be a black man. And above any of that, like I want to emulate Christ and I want him to yeah. to be able to emulate me. And if he's emulating me, I want him to emulate Christ. So in all that he does, I want him to be like Jesus. Yeah. And I feel like that's the best way he can prepare um, for growing up as a black man. And, and obviously there's so much more that goes into it and obviously there's going to be um, a lot of challenges um, that are going to come with it and um, but I'm just so excited for um, me to hopefully uh, be an example of Christ to him daily and so when he when he grows up um, the biggest thing that he does is emulate Christ yeah and that's that's basically what my response ended up being to him was that um, no, my dad didn't tell me how to be a black man or show, no. I'm just air quotes, it's, a, it's an audio, but how to be a black man. But my dad taught me how to be a man. Mm. He taught me how to follow Christ. He taught me how to be um, a husband and a father. Um, he showed me what it was like to be a man. And yeah, we did have some conversations about a race and, and some things, you know, my hair is a different texture than his. So like we had some of those conversations, whatever, that kind of stuff. But but it wasn't about the color of my skin. It wasn't about, it was about how to be a man. Yeah. Um, and that's what I told him. And, and I told him, I know him well. I said, I, I, you'll do a great job. Yeah. Um, and I obviously say the same thing for you. Like I know you as a person and I know uh, your son is lucky to have you as a dad, to have you as a role model. Appreciate that. Um, all right. I want to talk a little bit about your career as an athlete. And even before you were paid for it, but playing high school, college, Race isn't, from my understanding, from my limited experience, I played sports in high school, but like usually in a locker room, you're on the same team, regardless yeah. of your skin color, regardless of your faith, regardless of what has been your experience in a, in a football locker room, specifically in the NFL, in Canada, but, mm-hmm. but even back in college and high school, what has been yeah. your experience with, with race and a locker room? I think that's something I can even touch on right now, just in my most recent locker room right now um, in Canada. In Montreal. So first of all, we're in a different country. And Montreal is um, in Quebec, which is a uh, French-speaking province. So already that is a total different culture in itself. And obviously yeah. Canada is just a different country. But what's what's amazing about our um, locker room, like there's literally people from all over the world. We got people from Mexico. We got a bunch of people that were born in different African countries. We yeah. got people that lived in, and grew up in Canada and then all over the U.S. and all parts of the U.S. And, and yeah. so many different um, skin colors, um, cultures, everything. And, yeah. and it's... It is probably like the most mixed locker room I've been in, just of like most locker rooms I've been in from high school and college and even in the NFL when I was with the Vikings, like it's either just white or black. Yeah. And like now I just I feel like it's just like so many different cultures. So that's been amazing. And I feel like we really are all one. And obviously I think you get certain things. I think anywhere you go, um, there's going to be certain people, depending on where they grew up, whatever, that maybe they don't feel as comfortable being as mixed. But I think football brings you together and it's like, okay, like, I never really had a white friend. Maybe some people might say, or I never really had a black friend. Well, now I do. Now I got 50 of them. Yeah. And I think that's what's so special about sports. And I could even say that even from, from college, I think that really happens. Like high school, it happens, but you kind of all grew up in the same place. Yeah. And and so whether you're white or black, it's like, okay, we, we kind of, we know where we're from. And But I think what's cool about, and then you go to college and it's like, okay, well, there's people that maybe had, I went to South Dakota State in South Dakota. There's some guys from farm, uh, middle of South Dakota. They yes. probably never met a black person or never been friends with one. And then there's guys from inner city Chicago, wherever, and they've never seen a white person or never been friends with a white person. Yeah. And now you're on the same team and you become friends. And it's like, it's just such a great way to, to be mixed and, and uh, realize like, wow, like, maybe I've heard things about your race or whatever, but like, you're not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> and I, actually, I actually really like you. For sure. I think that's a huge difference getting yeah. to know people. Because yeah. you can't prejudging is only if you're going to get to know him there's no prejudice anymore like yeah. i know who you are as a person mm-hmm. i know you're a good dude so let's let's go do this together kind of thing yeah. um 
let's talk about Canada a little bit, and specifically mm-hmm. Montreal, where you guys were. Um, what is? I don't honestly don't know anything about Canada, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, but I don't. And I don't know what the racial. Uh, makeup is in Canada. I know Andrew Wiggins is from Canada. And he's black, so I know I know of at least one Drake's half Toronto, black, right? So yeah. I know there's at least one yeah. and a half black Canadians. Um, but we think in America, and maybe it's just an American perspective where we only think about ourselves, anyways. But mm. like we think of racism as a specifically, a uniquely American problem, mm. which it's not. Obviously, yeah. there's racism all around the world and different yeah. different facets yeah. of it. But what is what does that look like in Canada specifically? Um, maybe for you, Brenda, being black there, but then also for you guys as a couple mm. in Montreal specifically. I feel like when we were in Montreal, I Montreal is so diverse. There's people from literally every country. Yeah. So I felt like the attention that I got in the States were completely different from the attention I got in Montreal. I felt like people, they were not looking at me because I was black. They're just looking at me because, I guess... <laughs> how to dress or whatever the case might be and I felt there's so many Africans that live in Montreal there's people from Haiti there's people from the Caribbean so you're mixed with Indian and all these different things and I just felt like I don't maybe race is a thing every, like you said in so many different parts but I felt like in Montreal I never really experienced anything like that like even when we go out to eat it's almost like I know I talked to my friends that live in Washington about if they've experienced any racism uh, in Montreal and they're just like, no, not really. But once you go to like Toronto and like the other parts of it, then you start to notice mm-hmm. certain things. But when we were there, I didn't. Yeah. Montreal yeah. is a pretty, it's a yeah. pretty unique and a pretty amazing city. So like, first of all, just kind of just a little bit of my take on Canada. It's like Toronto is a lot like a big city in the yeah. U.S. It's a lot like a mini New York. And it's, yeah. like, I think that's where Andrew Wiggins and Drake is from and stuff. So, like, yeah. a lot of people that we know are from Toronto. It's almost like another U.S. city to yeah. us. I guess is what my take on it. And a lot of other parts of Canada are um, pretty similar to the U.S. Um, but Montreal, like, it's just, like, it's almost like its own. Like, it's completely different. It's, like, the second More biggest European. city behind Toronto. Yeah. European feeling. And everybody there is just, like, so mixed and from different countries. Like, a bunch of my teammates... Um, like from the U.S., we we're, we're going. People would always ask them, "Where are you from?" And be like, "I'm from Minnesota." They'd be like, "No, like, where are you from? Like, where's your family from? Like, what country?" Yeah, like you're not from the U.S. And they'd be yeah. like, "Well, I don't know." But like in in Montreal, they all know where they're from. Like they're like, "Oh, like, I'm I'm from Ghana." Like yeah, I'm, I'm from Haiti. Yeah. I'm from wherever. Like they may know exactly what country they're from, um, and it's just like because maybe they're they're more recently or whatever. But it's just like it's very mixed um, of cultures, and like it, like we talked about like even like food earlier, like we went to so many different types of uh, oh, restaurants nice. from different places. Like we went to um, Haitian restaurants, Jamaican restaurants, Ethiopian restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Thai restaurants, El Salvador, like just all types <laughs> we of love restaurants. Eating. Yeah, <laughs> and just, yeah. there's more that we've heard about that we haven't been to. Yeah. And I think so. I remember when we went out to eat for one of our friends' um, birthday, we were just having a conversation about where are you from? Like, a lot of the black Americans are just like, oh, I'm from Louisiana. But I'm like, where are you actually from? (laughs) So from that conversation, a lot of them started really questioning, like, where are my ancestors from? Like, where am I actually from? So when we were in Washington, like, a couple of weeks ago, one of the guys came back and actually did his ancestry thing and yeah. he found out that his ancestors are from Cameroon and all these different places. Yeah. So from that conversation, they <laughs> some of them left like wondering and wanting to know where they're yeah. from. So that was that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And I it's I mean there's different perspectives. It's I think both ways are cool, but it's cool that you can trace that or if people do ancestry to trace it to a certain place. Like for me, mm-hmm. my family's been my mom specifically, but both of my parents have their ancestors have been in America for so long mm-hmm. that I couldn't tell you countries. I couldn't yeah. tell you, you know I assume my mom's ancestors were from Africa at some point because yeah. she's black, but like I, I don't know where anything exactly. about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's cool that maybe I should do an ancestry thing at some point and see where where all my family's from and stuff. But um, I do want to. I think that's a, about it for questions. It was a good conversation. Mm-hmm. One thing that's important for me is having these conversations. Um, I I firmly believe you can argue opinions and political and whatever, but you can't argue with people's experiences. Mm-hmm. So I think if we all spent time 
um, talking to more people and getting to know people and and hearing their experiences. Um, I think that's a huge thing we can do. But I do want to give you guys some time. If there's anything you want to say that we should do right now, a lot of the, the people that after George Floyd, especially in Minnesota, people said, okay, now I realize there might actually be a problem. Yeah. But what do I do about it? Mm-hmm. So if there's anything that you guys want, again, no pressure, this is again a kind of a loaded question, I'm not asking mm-hmm. you to fix 400 <laughs> years of racism in America, but like, is, is there something that you would say, okay, maybe you should try this or encourage you guys to do this? Mm-hmm. I said, well, first thing I think you can start with, I think me and Brenda both started, and I know I have started just be, especially being a white man, I just like, just learning that there is a problem and, and understand there is and even just like watching. I mean, there's so many movies out right now and the documentaries and different things. Like we watched 13th yesterday and like it just, that rocked me just to to realize like obviously I've known that there's a problem. I've known that there was racism and then just like realize just like how it even is just like changed over time and, and to how we do it now with the prison system and different things where it's just like there's just such a bigger problem than we won't maybe even we want to we want to realize and i think once we actually realize that there's a problem once we actually learn like the truth and 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 learn the history of even our country and even what's going on right now then it's like okay now what can we do to make a change i think just for me i think just starting there to realize that and then i think just the more i see uh, obviously we live in a broken world and in a broken country and like the only thing that can restore any of this like i even watch this and and watch 13th and i'm just saying man like my heart is so broken it's like what can i do and it comes down to realize, like, man, like, it's nothing that I personally can do. Like, man, it's only going to be through the power of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and just really trusting, like, wow, like, what does God want to do through me now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think we're starting to get on to the right direction. So it's like, okay, like, obviously I haven't been doing much. I haven't been even aware to do it. And I haven't been um, obedient to, to what God's calling me to do as far as rec- reconciliation um, in my own home, my own community, in my own state, <laughs> let alone this own, the whole country. So I think just leaning into to God and, and really convicting me a lot in the last week of just like, man, I need to dig into God in prayer and say like, Lord, like, where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to do? Yeah. What direction do you want me to take this? Because on my own, I'm never going to be able to find a true solution. The only one is through Jesus. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I, I know for me being African, like for a while, I kind of, I was in denial of a lot of things that was going on because I never, I didn't understand it coming from Africa. I'm like, Oh, people just want to be victim and stuff like that. So after seeing what happened and now having Israel, it's like my eyes are open to all these different things. Like I want to protect him and I want people to love him for who he is, not based on his color. And um, I think one thing I, Jake and I have been talking about for a while is just like loving people. I feel like that. Like, that's what we were called to do. We we're called to love people. And it's easy for us to just pick a side. I know I, I was telling Jake, I'm like, if I watch and listen to all the things that's going on, I can easily just hate, like, white people and be like, you know what? I want absolutely nothing to do yeah. with them. But yeah. also, like, instead of thinking that way, I can also think, you know, what they are a body of, the, a body of Christ. Yeah. And not only just white people, it can be black. Whatever you're from, like, especially now I've been... I had to take a break from social media because of everything that was going on. Like, it just, it was really eating at me. And it's just like, instead of just seeing people mm-hmm. in that negative light, like, oh, I need to stay away from them. I need to see them as Christ see them. And mm-hmm. I want to raise Israel up in a way where he, I want him to know the things that are going on and not just completely ignore it and say, oh, this stuff. I want him to know the things that are going on, but also live his life following Christ. And knowing that he was made special and God gave him the color that he he asked for a yeah. reason and he's going to use that to impact so many people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think that's real good. I think that's amazing. Just like you said, just to end like that, like, man, like, God didn't make a mistake with any of our skin color, but like, he made us all yeah. the way he did yeah. on purpose. Yeah. And it's part of our Perfectly mission. in his image, yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, that's been a thought, me being mixed. Mm-hmm. Same, what Israel's going to go through is is the color of your skin being black. Am I black? Am I white? And, you know, what am I? Am I both? Am I not either? Mm. But that idea that God knew what he was doing when he made me this skin color. Like he, it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a, just my parents happened to get together. It was, mm. he created me specifically for this. So everything about you, God created you specifically for a yeah. specific purpose. Um, so I thought that was really good. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. Uh, both you guys, thank you for 
for taking the time to have this conversation. Um, like I said, conversations are important for me personally. It was it was cool to hear you guys' story. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to say before we wrap it up? Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having us. I think the last thing I would say, I guess, is leaving with what I've been been realizing a lot, even when Brenda was talking about like social media and things that we see all the time. It's like, man, like we see so many different things. I mean, we, we're just like consumeristic um, culture, consumeristic society, and we see all these different things, and and we can see five different opinions in a day. And it's like, man, like we, I get confused. I'm like, man, I don't know what to believe. I hear all these things; they all sound good, they all sound true. What is it? And I think God's been really showing me, like, man, like. You can't listen to other people more than you listen to me. When you hear something and it seems true, like, take it up with me. Oh. Yeah. And and so, I mean, I think that's just really hit me to know, like, wow, like, I can hear all these different things. And I'll probably just be swayed of what I heard last. Like, I heard yeah. five good things. At the time, they all sounded right. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, the last thing I heard, okay, I'm going to go to bed thinking that's true. Yep. And then, if, like, I never took it up with God, I'm just going to end up confused and be like, I don't know what's true. I don't know what's right, what's wrong. Yeah. I don't know what God really wants. But it's like, wow, do we, do we spend that time and ask him? Yeah. All right. That was good. That was good. We'll we'll end on that one. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for listening and join me next Monday for Vixen America. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, can you do three things for me? Can you like the video, subscribe to my channel, and tell your friends.